One of the most common questions I get is how can I make this turbo spool up faster? I'm going to give you a few quick details on how you can do that and a couple examples what I'm going to do with this turbo I've got here to help spool it up a little bit faster. Here's the turbo that I'm talking about that I'm going to try and get the spool up a little faster. And here's a couple other things that I'm going to refer to later in the video. This turbo I think is just too big but there's a couple things that I can try and work with to try and make it spool up a little faster. One way is this never had an o-ring to seal against the compressor housing. So I'm going to machine the compressor housing to fit an o-ring so that we know that we're going to seal that boost leak up. This bearing housing does get rusted on this, or is a little rusty on this face here. So when rust starts to take over the bearing housing, it's going to pit into the housing and then cause area or space where air is going to leak out of the compressor housing. That may be part of the problem, but I think the major part of the problem is the fact that this guy is putting this size turbo on a 1.3 liter motor. This, mo this turbo is going on or came off of an RX-7, but originally it came off of a diesel, which was most likely 13 liter or bigger. So this turbo is designed to be on a bigger motor. But the compressor wheel actually isn't really that big as you may think. The compressor wheel only is about 65 millimeter. This guy could have went with a much smaller frame turbo, meaning smaller turbine housing, smaller compressor housing, which means it's going to be able to spool up faster and have a bigger compressor wheel. This turbine wheel is actually a lot bigger than the compressor. The turbine's minor blade or minor size is actually 72 millimeter. This compressor side on the small side is 65 millimeter, meaning it's not going to spool up as quickly, which means that it was designed like that to be on a much bigger motor, but not need as much compression as uh, that turbine can release. Now here's a turbo that's bigger on the compressor than the one I showed you on the right. You can kind of get a size comparison here. It's much smaller in comparison. This one has a 67 millimeter compressor wheel, but there are options for a 60 and 62, which all three of those are rated over 700 horsepower on a gas engine. If you're trying to make that kind of power on the diesel, I would go with the 67 compressor wheel. And the options with this one is 64, 60, or 67 millimeter turbine. I prefer this turbine housing right here. This is one that I designed and came up with. This is a T3.82. It's much smaller, but we could machine it for a bigger turbine. So that will pick up swool because the size is smaller. I'll show you how this compares to this housing. is probably about half the size. Plus this one's T T4, this one's just T3. Another way you could try and pick up spools by having twin scroll. But in this case, this guy's housing is just so big, it's not really going to help that much. Another way to try and pick up spool is just the turbine housing design. So not necessarily the size, but the actual design of it. The way to pick it up is, or the secrets to picking up the spool is right here in the spiral. So you want the exducer of the turbine wheel to run really close to the end of the spiral here. We call this the volute. And if the turbine wheel exducer runs very close to the end of the spiral, then it allows for the compressed air to be more of a direct flow right on that turbine without letting so much air escape to fly over top of it. And that really helps pick up the spool. This turbine housing probably is not really designed like that. We'll get a look at it, but it is twin scroll. Well, it's decently designed that way, but the housing size is just so big, it's just going to be really hard to spool that up on a 1.3 liter. But the RX-7 is, is really good with big turbos, but I kind of feel like this turbo is probably just too big. One way is you could use a billet wheel, which is much lighter weight in some cases, but not all. I highly recommend you watch my billet wheel 
versus cast compressor wheel video. That way you can understand why I mentioned it that way. You should use a reasonable size turbo in relationship to the displacement on the motor. That's really important because if you use a turbo that's somewhat in relationship to the displacement or the natural aspiration of the motor, it's going to really help pick up efficiency and spool time and horsepower. But if you use such a large turbo that the engine will never spool that turbo, then it just makes it really hard for that turbo to ever spool up on that size engine. Another way is that you can make the turbo ball bearing. I have ball bearing turbo design or ball bearing turbos that I make that are up to 67 millimeter. But this size turbo or this frame turbo, I can't do a ball bearing design on that very easily. Well, I've never done one before on a turbo like that, so I, it's not something that I want to get into. Just because the design ball bearing turbos that I do are good for up to a thousand horsepower, but I don't want to do anything that's rated above that. You can also go with a smaller turbo, believe it or not. I think some of these people, they get a little bit excess when they try and put a big turbo on a small motor or small car because they think that it means big power but that's not always the case because when they put such a big turbo on there it may make big power but it's more of a dyno queen than anything else because it really reduces the drivability of the vehicle if the turbo is like really laggy and you know it's a reasonable size turbo for the car and it's just not spooling up like you think it should sometimes it's because it's leaking exhaust before it gets to the turbo so those things should be checked. Many times it can be the wastegate leaking. And like in some of the wastegates, the external ones, there's supposed to be a seat that's in the wastegate where the valve seals up against it. In some cases, that seat could have fallen out or not been given to you when you bought one that was second hand when you bought it from somebody else. So you wanna make sure that it's not leaking before the air gets to the turbo. And also just boost leaks in general. I have several videos on how to detect boost leaks. And if you wanna learn how to do boost leak testing, I highly recommend that you watch some of my videos on that because those that's really the most common issue with turbocharged cars. The intercoolers will corrode because of them being aluminum, especially if it's an original one and it's got over 100,000 miles on it. You want to make sure you check all those leaks. I actually did a test on one intercooler that was bought new from Grim Speed that was leaking. That was on the Subaru boost leak test video if you want to check that out. That was all the tips I had for this video. Hopefully you learned something. 